you're watching Gears. Brought to you by Holly Performance Products. Fuel your passion. And Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals. Hey, welcome to Gears. You know, recently we rolled in an old 81 GMC cargo van that spent its former life as a laundry truck, but not anymore. Because these old classic vans are getting popular all over again. Because they make a great cruiser, a hot rod, a camper, shop truck. Hold up on that car wash, gentlemen. I mean, you can pretty much do anything to them. So people are starting to grab them up, and that's good. They made zillions of these things, so they're pretty easy to find. What's not good is that virtually all sources of OEM replacement parts and cool aftermarket parts pretty much dried up when the van craze died back in the 90s. So if you want to customize one of these things, you're going to have to either hunt junkyards or you're going to have to find an alternative source for parts. And that's what we're showing you how to do on this project. Now, we've already started on the grill, so let's get back to it. Now, so far, we've shown you how to get rid of the old plastic grills, the old plastic headlight bezels, <laughs> and modify your upper core support to fit the earlier van grill. Now, the reason we did that is because now look how nice that fits the shape of the hood. This is how it was designed to look. So, once you've done this, now you are ready to actually choose a grill. And you got a couple of choices here, but none of them are direct bolt-ins. But the effort is worth it to get rid of this. Okay, the first and most obvious choice is to find yourself an original 71 through 77 van grill. Now, there's nobody repopping these at this point, so you're going to have to hunt down a used one. And surprisingly enough, they're fairly easy to find. But be prepared to have to do a little bit of repair work because they're all going to have some dents and dings on them. Now, you do need more than just the grill. Obviously, you need the core support and the center support, but you also need the hood latch, the headlight buckets, and the turn signals if you want a factory-style installation, and that's what you do want. Now, if you're looking for something that's a little more custom, that you can buy brand new from places like LMC Truck, well, you need to check out the 70 through 72 C10 truck grill. Now, you slide one of these onto a van, you're going to be shocked how close the fit is and how good they look. I mean, the shape is right, the height is right. I mean, it just looks right. But the key word I said here is close in the fitment because this is not a direct fit by any means. No, actually, the truck grill is about three quarters of an inch wider than the van grill. So you got a couple options here to make this fit. First of all, you can get a raw grill from LMC, come into the center, cut it, and take three quarters of an inch out of the center, weld it back together, then shorten your grill bar ends and work the end down here and you're good to go. The problem with this route is you have a custom grill. So if you ever damage it, you got to hand make another one. So your second option is to do your metal work out here on the fender and make it fit the shape of the grill. If you go that route, then if you ever damage the grill, you just buy a new one. Now also notice that the bumper is different. You'll have to switch to the C10 truck bumper as well because it has a proper bend in it. So, as you can see, there is a lot of extra work involved in doing this as opposed to doing a stock van grill. But at least you have the option of a brand new grill now. Okay, with your grill decided and in place, you are halfway there. Because no matter what grill you're going to use, you are going to run into a problem right here. Take a look. As you can see, the original headlights were here, and that does not match up with where the new headlight is going to be in the new grill. So what you need to do is just take a sharpie and mark around the perimeter of the opening to show where the new headlight is going to fit. All right, with the grill back out of the way, now you can really see the issue. The headlight bucket needs to move from here to about there. So all of this needs to be cut out. But there needs to be something back there to support the headlight bucket. So we are going to make a metal panel that's going to cover all of this opening once we cut it out. And we're going to utilize as many of these factory holes as possible to give us a factory look. Start by laying masking tape around the perimeter of the plate.
Then fill in the center, making sure to mark any bolt holes that you're going to use. Now carefully pull the pattern off. And transfer it to some cardboard. Then cut it out. All right, now we will test fit the template in place and make any necessary adjustments. Now notice we're utilizing the threaded hole here and then the one here at the bottom. Those are all in the right place. All right, let's go around the perimeter here. That looks good. We're utilizing that hole there, that there. We have this little relief cut for that dent in the metal, so that's going to lay really nice. All right, once you have it exactly how you need it, then you transfer this to the metal. For that, I'm using 16 gauge steel to give us plenty of strength. Now, once the panels are cut, the edges are trued, and the holes are drilled, we're ready to test fit the panel and drill any additional mounting holes. A successful automotive project takes planning and organization. But instead of using an old tablet or notebook, there's the Gears Deluxe Project Planning Book. This was designed to help you lay out a project, the parts, the tools, costs, and keep it organized with colored tabs, a pouch for receipts, and even a place to attach photos. If you decide to sell the vehicle, it serves as a complete history of what's been done. If you have a project or plan on starting one, the Gears Project Planning Book is the best way to lay it out and make it happen. Okay, with the panels made and all of this new fresh virgin sheet metal there, now you're ready to mount your headlight buckets. But the question is, where? I mean, that's kind of important that they're in the right place. So, what you want to do is put your grill back in place, and then take a Sharpie and mark around the perimeter of the opening onto the new panel. Then take everything back off. Now, cut out the original sheet metal and the headlight pockets. Okay, to put this all together, we'll take the original headlight pocket, trim off all the excess metal around the edges, drill some holes in it, then we'll take our original mounting plate, and based on measurements that we made to make sure everything's centered, we'll cut out the proper shape in the center. So then we can mount the pocket right in there. And of course, we drilled and tapped holes into the plate. Now, a lot of you guys might be thinking, why do you have to use this at all? Why don't you just cut a hole in the plate? Well, you can do it that way, but the reason we didn't, check this out. You can see that the headlight bucket is tapered. So is the headlight pocket. Now the reason they're done like that is they fit together. You have metal to metal contact, so it's good and solid, but it also allows that headlight to move around like a socket. That allows you to properly adjust your headlight with your headlight mounting screws. Also, it also gives you the right distance for your 
adjusting spring. So this isn't just a random hole here. There's a lot going on, so it's best to reuse this if you can. Now also, one of the reasons I'm using screws instead of rivets to mount this is that gives me just a little bit of fine adjustment so I can center that headlight up perfectly in that grill. Okay, once you have all your pieces cut and made, it's time to put it all together and see what you've got. Now the first step is to mount the original headlight pocket onto the new bracket you made. And using button head screws will give you a low profile rivet look that can still be disassembled. The next step is to fit the headlight bucket into the pocket using the factory adjustment springs. Another benefit to this approach is the factory adjustment screws can also be used, making replacement parts as close as an LMC catalog. With everything assembled, you're ready to fit the whole assembly into the van. And at this point, it should be a simple bolt-on. As you can see, this looks like a factory setup. And once we get some paint on these panels, they're going to blend right in. But the real test is the grill. And as you can see, it fits like a glove, and the headlights are not only where they need to be, but they're also fully adjustable. The turn signals are the last pieces to fit, and as you can see, they just require a little bit of trimming here to open up the hole, and then drilling of some holes in the back to not only mount the light, but also allow the wiring to come through. And they'll just pop right in place. Now, a few things to finish up. We need to mount the bottom of the grill. We need to install the center support, and then the hood latch. And that'll pretty much take care of the installation of the grill. But if you'll notice, now we have a curved grill and a straight bumper. So we need to do something about this bumper. And just like before, you have a couple of choices here. The first option is to hunt down an original 71 through 77 van bumper. Now, as you can see, these are cool, they're small, they have the right shape, and they are not available new. So whatever you find, it's gonna have to be re-chromed and you're gonna have to deal with rusty broken off bolts like this. Now, for a new option, you can go with a 67 through 70 C10 truck bumper. Now, as you can see, the curve of these bumpers are exactly the same. The truck bumper is about two inches wider, but it curls around on the end, so it's gonna wrap around the van and actually look really good. It's also a little bit taller, which fills out the front of the truck a little bit. Now, you can get these from LMC, brand new, chrome plated, you can get them in bare steel, you can get them with driving lights, so you got some choices here. But whichever way you go, it's going to be up to you to fit the bumper to your bumper brackets because they're not just going to bolt right on. But if you can handle modifying a grill like this, you can definitely handle fitting a bumper. And that's pretty much what's involved in doing a complete facelift on an early GM van. Now, like we said before, <laughs> there's a little bit of work involved here, whether you go with original parts or aftermarket parts. But as you can see, the end results are definitely worth it, especially once we get this thing cleaned up and painted and looking good. And now, Seal Tech, brought to you by Steel Rubber Products, helping restore the car of your dreams. When you're dealing with replacing door weather stripping, usually the replacement rubber is fairly easy to install because as you can see, they have little pins already installed. You pop them in place, connect the ends, and you're good to go. That's not usually the case though with the window felts that go on either side of your roll-up glass because those can be attached with rivets, screws, staples, or even adhesive. And because of that, this is where some people get hung up on a restoration project. So we're going to show you some tricks about dealing with those window felts. Now the first thing obviously you have to decide is how the original ones were attached. And if they have factory clips like this, man, you lucked out because they just pop in place. You got a screw here and you're good to go. However, if they're attached with screws like on this second gen Camaro and you want to put the new pieces on with screws, don't be surprised if there's no mounting holes in the replacement weather stripping, which means you either need to drill holes in the weather stripping to match the door or just drill new holes altogether. And if you don't want to use screws, of course, you can use rivets if you can get the rivet gun in that tight place. If your window felts are held in place with staples, you got some work ahead of you because staples are not only a pain to remove, they also require a lot more work to put in. Basically, what you have to do 
is drill a couple of holes in the metal backing so the staple will stick out through. Then you put it through the panel and then you take a tool and flatten the other side of the staple. That's a lot of work to put a staple in. Now it's possible to do it this way. Sometimes you have to for a concours restoration. But let me show you a simpler, easier option. And that is adhesive, because pretty much any piece that's held in place with rivets or screws or staples can also be held in place with adhesive, but not just any adhesive. Now, it's got to be a special urethane adhesive like you put a windshield in with. So, as you can see, you have some options when it comes to putting your new window felts in, but whichever way you choose to go, this is something that you can do. You know, one of the first true freedoms you experience as a kid is that first bicycle. Man, it becomes your transportation to the world, or at least the local neighborhood. And in my neighborhood, man, we all had bikes. And we'd stick playing cards in the spokes, and we'd suck on black licorice, make it look like we were big biker dudes, and it was magic. But a bike wasn't just about transportation. No, it became an extension of your personality. And there were all kinds of bikes out there. There were 10 speeds, there were mountain bikes, there were stingrays, there were BMX bikes, and they all had their strengths and weaknesses. And that's where the idea for the story of the Purple Bicycle came from. Because just like a bike might wish it had the talents or skills of another bike, so do we sometimes overlook our God-given talents and wish we had somebody else's talents, skills, because they seem to be better than ours. It's a simple lesson, but something we all need to be reminded of from time to time. And now it's time for another quick tip. For today's quick tip, we are going to deal with a common problem that can rear its head in a restoration project, and that is, how do you put a square hole in a metal panel? Now, first of all, why would you want to do this? Well, take a look. A lot of manufacturers use these plastic fittings, like this headlight adjuster, and they are designed to fit in a square hole. So, not only is the location of the hole extremely important, but also the size of the hole. Here's how to do it. To make a pattern of the exact size hole you need, put some tape over an old existing hole and cut it out with a razor. Now take that template and center it over where the new hole needs to be and mark it. Next, take a drill bit the size of the opening and drill out the center. Okay, what we have now is round holes the size they need to be, but you need to make them square. So, grab yourself a square file <laughs> and get to filing. Obviously, the corners and the edges are where you want to focus to remove the metal that you marked earlier. Now a small round file or a flat file will work in a pinch, but neither is as accurate as the square file for square holes. Also, it's important to go slow here, because these files can remove a lot of metal fast, and if you get the hole too big, the pieces won't fit and you're going to have to start over. So take your time here, test fitting as you go. Now once your holes are squared up nice, you're ready to stick in your plastic pieces. <laughs> And you're done. And this goes to show you that you can put a square piece in a round hole if you have the right tools. If you'd like to learn more tips to make your life easier in the shop, check out the tips page on the website. And now, Lube Tech, brought to you by Hot Shot Secret, powered by science. If you drive a gas or diesel powered vehicle, all you have to do is drive by a gas station to see that today's fuel prices are out of hand. I mean, most trucks take over a hundred bucks to fill the tank now. 
And with that kind of pricing going on, the last thing anybody wants to do is put in a fuel additive and jack the price even higher. But if you want to get the most benefit out of every drop of fuel you bought, using a fuel additive might be the best way to do that. Now I know you're thinking, okay, so how's that possible? Well, that's what we're going to show you as we dig into the top reasons why you might want to consider using a fuel additive. The first reason is the increased fuel economy and power. By boosting octane in gasoline and cetane in diesel, this basically raises the energy level of your existing fuel. So you get an immediate boost in power and fuel economy from the same fuel. The next reason is today's fuels are notorious for clogging up your injectors and fuel pumps with deposits and varnish, especially the ultra low sulfur diesel. A quality fuel additive will contain the right detergents that will dissolve the gunk and clean the system and keep your injectors and fuel pump and fuel lines flowing like they should. The next reason is fuel stability. Everybody knows that fuel does not do well when it sits too long, especially gasoline. It starts to turn into a funky varnish that will quickly gum up your tank, your fuel lines, and the whole fuel system. And the right additive can stabilize the fuel and keep it from turning rancid, saving you the work of purging and cleaning the fuel system of a vehicle that's been sitting. And with today's fuel prices, this alone is worth the price of a fuel additive. And with the price of new cars and trucks going up just like the price of fuel, a lot of people are holding on to their older stuff and driving at another 100,000 miles. And using a fuel additive can help make that happen. What are you working on? Brought to you by Woodward Fabrication, selling quality metalworking equipment since 1966. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Robert from Sandusky, Ohio and his project is a 64 Chevy Impala. Now he said he was looking for something that he and his family could just enjoy as a cruiser and this is what he found. Now this is a 33,000 original mile car. It's a four door, has the original paint on it and he said all it really needed was an interior and some engine work and that's such a great approach man. You don't have to do a ground up on everything. Sometimes it's funner just to get, get them running the way they are. So he said he and his wife put in a new interior and then he dug into the engine. Now check out this engine. Basically what he did was rebuild the stock 350, turned it into a low compression 383, and then slapped on a turbo. Yeah, check out that turbo. How awesome is that? Now, obviously the rest of the car is just like he found it, so nobody knows what's under the hood. And of course he put in a, an aluminum radiator, an MSD ignition, a Holley double pumper, so he's got some good stuff on there. So it's a great running car. Now he says that his kids love this thing, they help on it and they love to ride in it and nobody knows what's under the hood. Man, just the thought of him dusting off some of these cars with a four-door Impala that looks like that is just awesome. That's hot rodding. So to recognize such a great family project, Robert, we're going to give you one of these Woodward Fab metal shears so you can cut metal on this project or your next one. And then we're going to hook you up with one of our deluxe project planning books. This will allow you to keep track of everything that you've done on that project. Then we're going to hook you up with one of our Gears t-shirts because obviously you're a real gearhead. Then we're going to follow that up with a gift card from Holly so you can pick up some Holly products. And finally we're going to give you a stunt double die cast because everybody needs to do a little off-roading once in a while. Now for the rest of you guys, if you want to get in on this and get your project featured on the show, you got to send it to us. Go to our website, go to Gears Nation and submit it into What Are You Working On? The website's also the place to find out more information on any products you may have seen on the show, any Gears merchandise and how to join Gears Nation. You can also see Gears episodes for free on our YouTube channel and become a channel member. That way you get bonus content and you get early access to all the new episodes. Also, don't forget to check us out on Amazon Prime for Gears and the Gears Restoration series. Finally, don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're a radio person, make sure you check out our podcast, Tales of a Gearhead. All right, that wraps it up for us today. Hopefully you feel inspired to get out there and start working on something. You can always find a 64 Impala and I know you can find an old van. So the projects are out there. So hopefully you'll get out there, get your hands dirty. We'll see you next time.